Hello everyone, so this is going to be a new series of videos where I'm going to be exploring the use cases of ChatGPT into growth marketing. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one video every week related to how we can use ChatGPT in growth marketing. We'll start from the basics and then we'll work our way to custom GPTs and feeding data information and making decisions, coming up with experiments, A-B testing ideas and so forth. And I'll basically show you how you can use ChatGPT as your growth marketing manager or your growth marketing assistant. So let's get started. Um, we're going to start with a new chat thread. I am using the ChatGPT app on my Mac. In case you're wondering, uh, you could use any platform. I'm using the 4.0 version, which is, as you can see, the one that's the default on my ChatGPT. So let's get started. The first thing what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start off with a very simple and basic prompt, which is not the best way to approach growth marketing with ChatGPT, but I just want to show you the difference. So let's say uh, we say create a growth marketing plan for, um, let's say Levi's, let's take a big brand and just say create a growth marketing plan for this brand. So this is basically the first uh, first chat that I've started. Now, of course, there is some memory that ChatGPT has because of which the responses will be different for me than it could be for you. But I just want you to test this out and see what kind of responses it comes up with. So right now it's saying, it's talking a little bit about the target audience. So millennials and Gen Z, fashion enthusiasts, uh, eco-consumers, and it's talking about uh, basic channels, social media ads, shorts and reels, Google ads, SEO and blogs, partnership and collabs, email and SMS marketing, loyalty program. It's not a bad response, uh, omni-channel strategy. It's not a bad response, but it's something that any growth marketing person would sort of come up with. Like these are the points, talking points that they would come up with if they were thrown um, into a brand, which, you know, is, is more or less aware, like the awareness stage of the funnel is sort of sorted for this particular brand. But then they have to talk about the channel mix, the metrics and so forth. So it goes on and on. It also talks about some metrics and KPIs. But overall, if if you were, um, you know, someone with 10 years of experience in growth marketing and you've consulted a lot of brands, uh, this wouldn't be expected from you. you. They would expect a little bit more detailed uh, response, probably uh, with some thresholds, with some benchmarks, uh, with more questions, because there was not enough. There was not enough information when I said create a growth marketing plan for Levi's. So some people use a different kind of prompting style, which is the persona prompting style. We're going to try that out next to see if that gets us a little better result. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say act as a growth marketing manager with 10 years of experience in growth marketing and someone who has designed growth marketing strategies, ran experiments and created deep dive reports for different brands in the e-commerce D2C space. Focus on the D2C growth for Levi's in the international market. And now based on this, come up with a growth marketing strategy. So we've just sent a voice note. Um, it just converts it into text because just remember that AI works on text eventually, whether you give it a voice note or a text prompt, it's the same thing. Um, now we're going to see with a little bit more detail and with the persona prompt, which is act as a growth marketing manager with 10 years of experience, a lot of people use this as a persona prompt. We'll see if there's a, a slight difference in the kind of responses that it's coming up with. So I can definitely see that now it's a little bit more from a growth perspective. While I would say the previous response, as you can see, was a little bit more from a digital marketing perspective. And the difference is that this response was talking a lot about acquisition. Um, it was talking about target audience, where digital marketeers would talk about. It was talking about acquisition, which digital marketeers would talk about. Yes, retention was a little bit deeper into the funnel. So that would be something that a growth marketeer would talk about. And then omni-channel strategy is something that a, a digital marketeer would talk about, retargeting, digital performance marketeers talk about it. So I would say the previous response was 80% digital marketing and 20% growth marketing. So let's see now what it's come up with. So now it's talking about life cycle segmentation. It's going into deeper into the funnel that the customers have already been acquired. And now how we are segmenting those customers into the first time buyers, how we are promoting classic products, 
and how we are what are we promoting for the repeat buyers and what are we doing for the lap, uh, lapsed customers so it's a little bit more of a full life cycle of the user which i appreciate the acquisition strategy is of course going to be an overlap with digital marketing but now it's talking a little bit more about the product led acquisition like limited editions which is nice and then it's talking about CRO, which is now it's getting into the growth marketing game. It's talking about A-B testing and personalization, which is great. It's talking about retention, LTV. Now, this is where the magic happens, right? Because when you when you come in the growth marketing domain, you come in the LTV domain. When you're playing in the digital marketing domain, you're typically playing in the CAC domain. So you're thinking about how can we uh, spread more awareness? How can we acquire more customers? And how can we reduce the cost of acquisition? As a growth market here, you're looking at the full funnel. You're seeing how can we increase the LTV. And now it's going into the retention using uh, email and SMS, the automations, the win back campaigns, the loyalty programs, the cross channel engagement. This is all really good stuff. And I would say that now it's coming up with really growth marketing related tips. So look at this experimentation and data driven growth, growth experiments framework. Setting up continuous experiments, establish a framework for growth experiments across different touch points. This is something where it's really deep diving into the A-B testing aspect, rather the growth hacking aspect of growth marketing. Like how can we make small changes and get those small wins which will compound over time. It's also looking at CRO elements, retention strategies, getting into cohort analysis, which is a great move. Now you're going into the digital marketing, um, into the funnel to growth, going from digital marketing to growth marketing. And it's also coming up with, um, you know, some KPIs, which are more about lifetime value. I would say CAC and ROAS is still a performance marketing metric, uh, while churn and, uh, you know, uh, LTV, CLV, um, those are more of the growth marketing metrics. So really very happy with what it's created compared to what it had before. Now there's, of course, different inputs that you can give to improve this, but we just went deeper from just saying create a growth marketing plan to saying that you are a growth market. Yeah, and it really went deeper. What I also like to do is I like to upload some documentation. I like to upload some frameworks, etc. Um, uh, you know, if I've, uh, for example, I personally follow the A3R3 framework for growth marketing, but I'm going to let, this time I'm going to let ChatGPT decide in the next lessons, probably I'll show you how I upload my frameworks and then allow ChatGPT to work on that. But in this case, what I'll do is, uh, that's a better response. I think I can see more growth marketing strategy in this response compared to what we saw before. I also want you to think now from a full funnel perspective. I want you to start thinking about uh, the entire user journey from the time that they're aware about the brand. Now, of course, awareness to some extent is sorted because it's a big brand that we are discussing. Then I want you to think about acquisition, of course, as an omni-channel, but then go deeper into the conversion stages where the user lands on the product pages. Um, and then we have to take them through the cart page, through the checkout process, what kind of conversion rates and how we can improve those. So experimentation at that level. I also want you to think about AOV because getting a order may not be the biggest problem for Levi's, but getting a high AOV could be something that would benefit them to increase the value of the user. Then I want you to think about that user going into our CRM. So going into our email, WhatsApp, SMS, push notifications, and how we can use those channels to you know, get the repeat orders from the same user. And then finally, how do we get that person to refer other people, which is the referral stage. I want you to make experiment ideas for each of the stages of this funnel. And if I've missed out any stage that you want to cover, um, of course, loyalty could be included in the retention strategy. And uh, Levi's has a program for loyalty that, you know, we, w we want to maximize on. Let's say that's the goal that we have. Um, and then make a stage-wise full funnel strategy with a few sample experiments that we could run. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to push it from the strategy phase to the execution phase very slowly. And the execution for me is experimentation. And finally, we'll, we'll cover the analytics phase in a separate video. We, we can actually upload up data and ask ChatGPT to analyze that data for us. But now let's see what it comes up with when it comes to full funnel growth marketing strategy. So now we are really going into growth marketing with this prompt because this prompt has really uh, pushed ChatGPT to think as a growth marketer and to think in terms of the full funnel. So here's a full funnel strategy. So the first thing it's coming up with experiments for awareness. 
Um, so all of your social media stuff, my Levi style influencer giveaways, all that kind of stuff is sorted with awareness. Acquisition, it's talking about your core ads, your creative testing strategy, which is going to be really important. Uh, and then finally, retargeting. So those are the big pieces of the puzzle when it comes to acquisition. Then it's talking about the conversion stage where it's giving us some experiment ideas to add more social proof, to have personalized recommendations, maybe use AI driven product recommendations to have bundling offers. Now, when you're speaking this language, you are really a growth marketeer. But if you're always talking about acquisition and different campaigns that you can run on Meta and Google, you're just a performance marketer. If you're only talking about email, you're an email marketer, right? So see how it's now going into the different stages of the conversion journey. So it's gone from the product page now to the cart page. It's talking about exit intent pop-ups, free shipping thresholds. If you buy, you know, $100 worth of products, we give you free shipping. It's talking about cross-sells. If you buy this, you can also get this. You know, many people who bought this also bought this, etc. Checkout is also talking about adding trust. So people are like, okay, I trust this payment gateway enough to give my credit card information. It's talking about AOV, upselling during the checkout, gifting options, add a gift. You know, maybe it's $5 for a gift. Um... Then it's talking about your retention CRM. So it's giving you some ideas like a post-purchase flow. So now you have some complimentary items that can be offered in your post-purchase campaigns. You have a series of emails that you can send out there. It's talking about win-back campaigns. So maybe there are customers who are not engaged enough in your CRM. Now you can win those back. It's talking about flash sale through push notifications and SMS. It's talking about new launches through WhatsApp. This and this is really going good in terms of experimentation. Then finally, it's come to the referral stage where it's talking about um, UGC referral campaigns and so forth. It's talking about optimizing the loyalty program, uh, testing different tiers. So right now, let's say Levi's has the Red Tap program, uh, which is a loyalty program, but now it's also wanting Levi's to test different tiers within that program, maybe an orange, a red, a yellow tab. I don't know if these actually exist, but I think that these are terms I've heard related to Levi's. Uh, Post-purchase and uh, re-engagement, anniversary emails, when it's your birthday, maybe you get a discount on your birthday as well. And then it's talking about the metrics that we should be measuring and how we should optimize the full funnel, final action steps for each step of the funnel. So top of the funnel, what do we do for awareness, mid-funnel, test CRO, uh, bottom funnel, CRM, uh, referral and loyalty. So that's a full funnel strategy that's created. I think between these three prompts, you've only given it three prompts. This is a chain of uh, thought prompting pattern, but in a different way. So usually what happens is you give us you give a sub prompt, then you expand on the prompt. What I'm doing is I'm just going deeper and trying for it to behave more like a growth market here with each step. Of course, this can all be streamlined and you don't have to do it from scratch if you can train a custom GPT, which is something that we'll see in the coming lessons. But that's all for this video. This was meant to be just an introduction of how you could, without having any fancy custom GPTs and so forth, just use the basic prompts to get ChatGPT to really behave as a good growth market and come up with actionable experiment ideas. And we will have a series of videos. We'll continue the series where we'll also have it prioritize those experiments. We'll have it design those experiment ideas, pass it on to the teams, get the data. We'll have it study the data and finally conclude the winners of the experiments, whether the hypothesis made sense or not. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll enjoy this series and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.